So now we've got our modeling sheets taken care of. We are ready, hit end to hide that, to start modeling. Uh, and being that this is box modeling, we are going to start with a box. So add mesh cube, and there's our cube. I'm going to uh, tab to go into edit mode, and Z to go into wireframe view. And then the first thing I'm going to do is uh, add in a mirror modifier. So I'm going to control R to add in a edge loop right down the middle, left click to confirm, and then right click to keep it in the center. And then deselect that and box select the left side in wireframe view so that I'm selecting the front and the back. Uh, and then X to delete those vertices. I'll then add in my mirror modifier and make sure clipping is enabled. So now none of the center vertices can pull away from the center. And whatever I do to the right side is mirrored across to the left side. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, so now I'm going to select everything and I'm just going to scale it down and move it up and start positioning it right at the center of the torso. So I can just... Uh... Now what I'm going to be doing a lot of is um, hitting A to either select everything or, or deselect everything, B to box select, uh, and then uh, G to grab moved vertices around. Um, and then occasionally scaling, but it's going to be basically those same few commands um, paired with E to extrude and uh, Control R to add in an edge loop, and that that's that's basically uh, as far as key commands go. All that this is, the rest is just in, in placing them in the right spots. So uh, I'm going to select everything and uh, scale it down a bit. Uh, I'm going to hit G and just move it into about there and I'm going to scale along the z-axis and move it back up so I'm right about there okay I've got that the top line is uh, oops. Uh, the top line is about here the bottom edge is about here and then I'm going to hit 3 to go into side view and scale it along the y-axis and move it forward uh, as well. Select these back vertices and move them there. Okay, so this is all my model is right now, but you can see that it is lining up with uh, my model sheet. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select these top four vertices and I'm going to uh, extrude them up to about here and scale them out a little bit and then extrude up again to about here and one more time to about there and then scale in okay and then I'm going to go to the side view and just adjust things uh, accordingly so that they line up uh, oftentimes in the side view, I will just constrain it to the y-axis. Um, it can be helpful as you're modeling to kind of pick which view, which side of the character sheet is going to be your predominant one as far as what you're lining everything up to, and then just using the other two to other sheets to um, line up the views that you can't see uh, from the main view. Uh, and the reason I, I say it's helpful to pick a predominant one is that if, say for instance, the elbow joint didn't line up exactly between the front view and the side view, well, you have to pick one uh, to, to follow, and it's just helpful to make sure that whichever one you're picking, you pick for every discrepancy. Um, because if you just pick, if you pick the front view for the elbow, but if you pick the side view for the knee, and then you pick a, maybe the back view for the neck uh, for whatever reason, once you put them all together on the same model, it can be a little bit messier than if you just always choose, kind of figure out which is your primary, which is your key view, um, and then using the other ones just uh, as supplemental views. So uh, a lot of this is just kind of switching back and forth between views, and, and every time you add in more geometry, 
uh, making sure it lines up. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, when I do the arm, I'm going to select this side face right here. Okay, it lines up right there, and I'm going to extrude it out. And then I'm going to move it down to the wrist and rotate it around. I'm not going to worry about the hands right now. That's a hands are their own thing, which require special attention because they're a little bit more complicated than basically the rest of the body combined, um, or at least the rest of the torso. Uh, but rotate the the wrist so that it it lines up with the way that the actual joint is. Uh, I might even uh, I won't I won't rotate it there yet. Um, Okay, now I'm going to uh, select these two vertices and I'm going to move them out for the top of the shoulder. And uh, let's add in the elbow joint. So control R and add in an edge loop. Slide it up to the elbow. Rotate it a little bit. I'm going to scale it in and try to line it up as best I can. Maybe rotate it back a little bit. Okay, go back to the side view, and uh, I I don't usually actually slide the arm around, but uh, in this is an instance, just as an example, I will. So that's the X, and I'm just gonna hold down Shift and slide it so that it kind of lines up, sort of. Now you'll notice that the shoulder area is enormous. I'm not gonna modify that just yet. I'm gonna wait till I have a little bit more geometry. Uh, in the torso, um, but that will certainly be addressed. But I do want to get, I'm going to scale the elbow edge loop along the y-axis and move it back just a little bit. Um, when you're modeling uh, characters, it's very helpful to model in a relaxed pose. Um, so if I go to front view, this is sometimes called an A pose. If the arms were straight out to the side, that would be the T pose. Um, but you will almost always see whatever the model sheet is, whatever pose they're in, that the joints will be relaxed. Um, the elbows will be slightly bent, the knees will be slightly bent, even all of the fingers will be slightly bent. And the reason for that is if you model with a slight bend in the joint, it's easier when you get to the animation deformation stage, it's easier to get cleaner uh, deformations than if you model straight. Um, getting, getting a clean bend at a joint if you model it as as a straight line um, can cause some issues, uh, whereas if you start with a bend, it just makes the, the whole process a little bit easier. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to side view, and I'm going to uh, move that back, which I believe was right about there, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not gonna add, couple more edge loops to the forearm and a couple more to the bicep and I'm just going to continue to select them um, sometimes I'll double tap G to edge slide them up and just keep pushing and pulling the vertices around um, until I get the look that I want maybe scale it in a little bit uh, this, I think I can scale in a little bit. Move it up a touch. Um, let's see. Actually, I'm going to move the, uh, I'll move the side view back to that so that I can get a better sense of what's going on. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to rotate the I want to rotate the end of the arm, but I want the next two joints to come with it. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to select the elbow joint. I'm going to hit Shift S, 
cursor to selected. I'm going to put the 3D cursor right in the middle of that joint. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything that I want to rotate and go into side view. Hit period on the keyboard to rotate around the 3D cursor. You can verify that down here, 3D cursor. And then in the side view, I'm just going to rotate it forward just a little bit. Again, just because I want to have that kind of that bend established already. Not a lot, but just a little bit. Um, and I might actually move the elbow joint back a little bit more too to kind of reinforce that. And I'm going to hit Shift C just to recenter my 3D cursor so it's not in my way anymore. Um, yeah, that'll be good for now. It's this is a, a base mesh that there will be plenty of opportunity to keep manipulating these points. Uh, and then when I'm done, I'm going to hit comma on the keyboard to go back to uh, rotating whoops, rotating around the bounding box center. So now I'm going to work on the upper arm joints. Just get those pretty well lined up. Um, another kind of good general rule of thumb is just have all of your edges should be should flow uh, pretty smoothly so you don't want any sudden changes in uh, in direction of an edge uh, for instance you wouldn't want you know something that kind of zigzags back and forth you'd want a, a smoother transition so either that means adding more edges to help define the the transition um, or just smoothing things out that can sometimes be a good indication of where you need uh, work on your smoothing um, is just watching how your edges are, are flowing and how your verts are flowing between each other. Um, select those two, bring that in a little bit, look at the side view. So I think we can, so I can select those both and scale them along the y axis a little bit. Move them forward a little bit. Actually, oh, oops, not that one, just that one. Just the bicep one. Scale on the y axis. Move it forward a little bit. Oh, and the one above it, too. That's the one I wanted to move. Scale that down. Move that forward. Just kind of get them lined up pretty close uh, okay so we're we're obviously not quite there yet but uh, don't worry we're getting there um, next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude down the rest of the bottom of the pelvis so I'm going to select the bottom four verts E to extrude go to about here uh, now because I have the mirror modifier on I can actually just hit grab to move it out and the center verts will be locked um, and it will be kind of like scaling but it won't be changing the uh, the depth of it will just be moving it sideways oh I want to move that back too that was a negative 0.18 nope that wasn't it it was 0.18 there it is okay so again every time I, I add geometry I want to check my alignment I'm actually going to move this vert up here up to about there. You know, I'm looking for kind of natural joints and seams and breaks in the body to help indicate where I want to have my geometry. Um, I'm going to extrude down once more and move that out a little bit. I'm actually going to move this over there. Check my side view. Scale that in a little bit. Put that over there. Um, now, as you're as you're working and you start seeing, you know where the inside and the outside are at two different heights, it can be kind of confusing to to know if this is the inside vert or the outside vert. So, make sure you're always kind of moving around and keeping track of exactly what vertice or what what vertex is. Uh, that you're moving, so you're not moving uh, the wrong one. 
we move that back up a little bit, I think. As I keep forgetting which one it is that I'm moving. Uh, let's move that one out too, for now. Okay. Um, the next is the legs. Actually, oops. <laughs> I move that whole thing, I think, up to high. Let's move that back down. OK. So next is the legs. Um, now, I don't. what I don't want to do is just extrude this solid face because it's going to be stuck in the middle. And also, I don't want, um, if I do that, even if I turn off clipping and extrude out that face, it's going to create this six edged pole right here in the center, which is going to cause pinching and just all sorts of nightmares um, down the road. So I need to add in a little bit more uh, geometry before I make that extrusion. Um, so I'm going to add in, I'm actually going to add in, I think, two edge loops. And I'm going to right click uh, to keep them centered. Uh, I'm going to select this most inner one. And I'm going to scale it along the x-axis a little bit to straighten it out. And then double tap G to edge slide it in. Um, let's say to about there. And then I'm going to select these bottom two verts. And I'm going to uh, double tap G and slide those in a little bit further. OK. Uh, and then I'm going to select this next edge loop. And I'm going to double tap G and slide that in, scale it along the x-axis a little bit. So I want to try to keep everything fairly even. Um, now what this allows me to do, because right now this is looking pretty blocky, um, but now that I have this extra geometry here, I can select this kind of corner edge um, and double tap G and kind of edge slide it in a little bit. And I can do the same thing for the back one. Double tap G, edge slide it in a little bit. Um, and now you can start to see that I'm starting to get a more organic form. You can do the same thing on the top of the arm. Uh, well, actually, maybe not yet. But I will take these two verts and just I'm going to scale them towards each other. Uh, same thing with this edge. I think I'm going to. Let's see. I don't want to scale it. I'll scale it along the y axis a little bit. Uh, but not those two. No. Um, it's a lot of this is just kind of repetition and the more you do this the more you'll get a sense of what the human body is supposed to look like um, and you'll get better at kind of picking out what it is about what you're doing that doesn't look right it's a it's not a particularly easy thing and it's not one that that you can necessarily expect to pick up quickly um, but when you do get it and, and as you progress you know, it allows you to create some really cool things um, Okay, so that's, I'll come back to the torso, but not, now I want to do the legs. So I've got this extra geometry down here. I'm going to go into face select mode and select these two faces. And I will extrude these down. Okay, and then I'm going to rotate them so they're flat and move them in to the ankles. Uh, now, obviously, we need to scale them and, and adjust them accordingly. Go to side view, and I just want to go right to the top of the ankle. Uh, I'm also going to I'm going to go to vertex select mode with all of them selected. 
all the bottom four or bottom six vertices selected. I'm going to scale to zero along the z-axis, uh, just so that it's coming together at a good flat point. Uh, not an actual point, but uh, you know, good flat position. Um, okay, and then I'm going to add in a knee joint. I'm going to scale along the z-axis a bit. Uh, I'm going to side view, figure out exactly where I want that to be, which I think will be something like there or so. I'm going to add an edge loop for the thigh, scale that up a little bit. Go along the x-axis a little bit. Uh, and now this is the point where the shins are going to be a little bit different than the uh, character sheet. I'm going to add a couple of edge loops here. And I'm going to scale along the y, whoops, just the top one. I'm going to scale along the y-axis. I'm going to move it back a little bit to help kind of help start distinguish that shape. Scale that one down, move that one back a little bit. Yeah, that feels, move that back a little bit more. That feels a little bit better. Um, because we're not going to have an, quite that much detail to define the kneecap at this point, uh, going that extreme I don't think would be quite right. Um, Move that out a little bit though. And move the bottom out a little too. Okay. Uh, next thing, you can see that the, the inside of the leg is a little bit ridiculous at this point. So I'm gonna, going to select that and I'm going to select uh, this and edge slide it in a bit. And then the same thing for the back side. And double tap G, edge slide that in a little bit. So it's a little bit more of a natural form uh, to the leg. OK. So you can see we're starting starting to get there. Um, you know, at least it can be identified as human. <laughs> Not necessarily a particularly realistic, uh, photorealistic human. But you know, we're, we're on the road to success. Uh, I'm going to jump back. Whoa! I'm going to jump back up to the top of the torso, and let's uh, let's add a little more detail in the arms. So I'm going to add a edge loop right here down the front, and I'm going to right click to keep it in the center. And that edge loop actually was added to the back as well, which is good. And then I'm going to hit Alt S to scale out along the normals. So it's going to scale out along the direction that each individual face is pointing, um, which is a good thing to do, uh, especially when you're working with any organic or smooth forms. Um, you'll notice, and I'm actually I'm going to jump over to uh, another layer to illustrate this uh, and temporarily hide my background images. But if I add in this uh, UV sphere. Okay, and I'm going to add a subsurface modifier uh, at level two, and set the shading to smooth. Actually, I'm going to bump it up to three, just so it's extra smooth, and very obviously uh, a a nice round sphere. If I wanted to add more detail to this sphere, what I would do is uh, add in an edge loop. Okay, so add in the edge loop. I can slide it around once I decide on one. I'm just going to right click to keep it in the center because that's where I want it. Now if I tab back into uh, object mode, you can see that there's this kind of a, a, a dead spot, a flat spot in the sphere. Uh, and that's because of this edge loop that I added. And I added it right in the center. Um, and it's the subsurface modifier is just interpreting it uh, to help keep it straight. Now this is really useful when you're adding edge loops to control uh, you know, if you're if you have a cube and you want to make the edge a little bit sharper, you add an edge loop and slide it towards the outside edge, and then you get a sharper uh, corner. That's great. 
for organic forms, uh, that's less great. So when you add an edge loop, if you hit Alt S and just scale it out a little bit along the normals, and sometimes it can help to hold down Shift. Uh, actually, let me undo that and do it again. So Alt S and hold down Shift to scale it just a little bit. It can help to minimize uh, that flat spot that is pretty easy to get. So um, it's, a, it's a good habit to get into whenever you add an, an edge loop to an organic form, um, unless you want a flat spot, um, all of those vertices should probably move in one direction or another, and Alt-S to scale along the normals is a, is a great way to do that. Okay. Let's go back to the model and turn background images back on. Cool. Okay, so I added... Whoops. I added this edge loop, scaled that along the normals a little bit, um, now that I have a little extra geometry, I can, much like I did the legs, I can take these outside, they're almost like corner edges of the arm, double tap G and slide those in a little bit. And definitely the ones on the inside need it. Okay. Um, next thing, I'm going to take these two edges, or two vertices, that edge, I'm going to slide that in, okay, because the actual, at that point of the torso, it's wider towards the back than it is the front. I'm going to uh, double tap G and I'm going to slide, slide those back a little bit as well. Um, okay, that's, that's okay for now, I think. bring that out a little bit, I think. Yeah, okay. Uh, next, let's get a, a rough head uh, on the body. So to do that, you can select these three faces in the front view and extrude them up to about here on a side view, rotate them to about the base of the skull, scale down as necessary, reposition, oh, and you notice I had clipping turned off, which means when I scaled them out that I've got this interior face, so to fix that, I'm going to select that interior face and delete it, then I'm going to select these edges, or these faces, and just move it all back into the center and now it's back connected. Okay. Uh, go back into vertex mode. Now I could move them uh, towards the center, but if I do that, then they'll start merging together. I don't want that, so I'm actually just going to scale along the x-axis. Actually, I can scale just in general. Uh, and then move it in. Uh, right about there, I think. Oops, scale back along the y-axis. Okay. I'm going to add in one more edge loop here, right at the turn of the neck. Scale it, move it, and change it up a little bit back there, scale it along the y-axis. Okay, and again, these edges, uh, not that, but those edges can move in because this is the neck, it's not a box. Move that in. Even these edges can slide in a little bit. Uh, edge slide can be a really good way to smooth things out. Um, even if you want it to be more or less in the same position, but just want to smooth out the surface, uh, what you can do say for instance uh, right here is edge slide it one way and then edge slide it back the other way and it'll kind of smooth it out a bit. Um, let's see if I can find, like this edge will, might be a good example, so slide it up here 
and slide it back down and now it's not protruding quite as much and it feels a little bit more uh, natural. Uh, another thing that you can do to help if you've got like maybe one spot that feels really pinched or really sharp uh, is just select that specific vertice or vertex and hit uh, W to bring up your specials menu and smooth. Uh, you can smooth just one vertex uh, and it'll kind of average it out, average its position out amongst all of its neighbor vertices. Uh, I'm going to undo that. Okay, so I've got a neck. Uh, now it's time to get the, the rest of the head. So go into face select mode, select these three faces again. I'm going to do this in side view and just extrude it out to the top of the head and rotate it a little bit. Okay. And in front view, go back to vertex select mode. Uh, in front view, rotate it so it's more head shaped. And again, this is just going to be a, a placeholder head, so it doesn't really need to be that perfect. I'm just hard for me not to at least adjust it a little bit. Um, and add in a couple more edge loops. Scale them uh, up. Uh, I'll do it one at a time. Scale it up. It's not going to be a pretty head. Uh, let's see. Whoa, what did I do? I accidentally ripped it. Okay, rotate it. So let's slide that up and scale that out so it's a little bit higher up on the head, I think. Front view. Let's move that one. I just slide that over. Or vertex slide. And let's slide that over a little bit. Okay. Maybe take these down to about there. And just kind of get the, the general idea, and I'll add one more edge loop in the center. Okay. And I'm going to slide these back over a bit. Oops. Get a different view. Okay, so there's a, a real basic head, um, but it's just something as a, as a placeholder to get a sense of the form. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is the feet. And for the feet, I'm going to do much the same way as the head. I'm going to select the bottom faces, and I'm going to extrude down. Whoops, I don't know what I just hit, but it wasn't right. Extrude down to the floor and scale to zero along the z-axis to make sure they're flat. Okay. Uh, now I'm just going to select these front two faces. You know, these six vertices. And then extrude them out to the tip of the foot and scale them down now uh, in this case it's going to be more of a boot than a foot so I'm not going to go all the way down to uh, toe size but I will add another edge loop about halfway and just move the top vertices uh, down to give the indication of a foot and that needs to be a little bit wider I think I'm going to go into wireframe, select all of that, and scale it up along the x-axis a bit, and yeah, I think that'll work uh, for now, and I'll select all of these and just rotate it out. z-axis so it's a little bit more of a natural stance okay so there's a real super basic uh, body mesh and it's not 
the proportions aren't quite there. Um, so I'll probably end up working on a little bit more, but that's the general technique. And then it's a lot of just kind of vertex pushing around uh, to get the exact forms that you want. Um, next week we will we'll do some hands uh, and then we'll actually do some roughing in of um, articles of clothing. So uh, boots and, and a shirt or a coat. Um, I'll probably have done a little bit more work on this to get the forms a little fleshed out like the back of the thigh is a bit flat so I'm going to bring that out a little bit. Um, yeah, it's just a lot of kind of looking at it from all angles. Um, it can also be really helpful to hit five to go into perspective mode and see how it looks in perspective mode because that's how your eye will actually see it. That's how the camera will see it and make sure that it feels right there. Um, for instance, the, you know, I think that might, that might be a little, just a little too high. I might move that down a little bit, move that down too. Um, yeah, and then just adding adding edge loops where you feel like you need them and, and uh, moving them around, smoothing them out. Uh, add one down the top of the arm. Uh, actually, I don't want to. Yeah, I probably will add that down and then Alt S to scale it a little bit and then go back in and smooth everything out um, to get the form that I want. Yeah, that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, you know how to contact me, and uh, I'll see you next week.